Hello, how are you guys doing? Thank you so much for watching. Uh, today I'm going to share with you my heart. And this is going to be a the awesome message. Are you ready? Amen. So the title of this is going to be The Matters of the Heart Part 2. So a couple of months ago, I did a message about the matters of the heart. And the things, there's so much things that goes on in a person's heart. And sometimes you just want to understand how the heart operates, how the heart works. How the heart works for brothers, sisters, like the heart is deep waters. That's what Proverbs teaches. So yeah, um, the matters of the heart, part two. And I'm going to share a little bit more about my life too as well. So you can get an idea of the things that I had to go through with my own heart myself in the, in the within the last 11 years as a disciple. So one thing I want to do is I want to read you a, a story in Matthew chapter 26. And beginning verse 47. Now this story right here is about Jesus. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I'm, I'm going to read this. So you can be able to get an idea. How Jesus dealt with his heart. When his heart got wounded by his own people that he loves. You know. Matthew 26, 47 to 49. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him. It was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priest and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man Aresim. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Judas been with Jesus for three years. Years. I mean, they had done almost everything together because you know the the stories of the disciples. The disciples followed Jesus. Jesus invested his heart with the disciples and with Judas. Jesus loved them. He trained them. He done everything with them. And as a human being, this is something that we do a lot. You know, we can tend to invest our hearts with friendships. And and, and you do pray that great things could, could happen with these friendships that you invest your heart in. And, you know, people we study the Bible with, we share our faith. We invest our hearts with the people we study the Bible with. But then, you know, one of the things we hear a lot from our church leaders is this Proverbs? Let's go to Proverbs real quick. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23. It says here, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. And you know what's very challenging about this scripture? Like when you really give your whole heart, when you're when you're a brother or sister that's known to be very loving, and you give, you constantly give, give, give. It can be very challenging to guard something that all you do is just give. You just continue to pour, 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 because we know the scripture in, in Colossians chapter three twenty three, in Colossians three twenty three. Says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Scripture said, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. So that is the challenging part because you know that the scripture says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Give your whole heart. But then Proverbs says, guard your heart. How do I guard something when I'm continuing on to give what the scripture teaches me to give? And that's what we see with Jesus. It's like 
did he guard his heart? He just kept it open. I guess with Jesus, uh, he just, he was okay. You know what? People going to love him. He's going to love people. He's going to get hurt by people. And, and, and he just continued on to keep loving, even in the midst of knowing that he can get hurt by people that he's pouring his heart to. And that's what he's done. You know, he poured his heart to Judas, and Judas betrayed him with a kiss. And it's really challenging, you know, um, because the only thing you know how to do is pour your heart, is give your whole heart. You know, do people appreciate that? Or or they do one of these things right here in um, Leviticus 25, 17. Leviticus 25, 17. Leviticus 25, 17 says, Do not take advantage of each other, but fear your God. I am the Lord your God. Do we take advantage on each other? And, and that's going to be challenging too, you know, because uh, over the, the past well, 11 years, I mean, I have must have given my heart to so many people. And, and, you know, even people I'm studying with, just give, just give, just give. And, and they love my giving. They appreciate my friendship. But, you know, at the end, they, you know, it's like, hey, Davis, let me give you a kiss in the cheek. You know, I mean, have, can you can you relate? You know, I can tell you how many kisses in the cheek that I got in over the last 11 years from people that pour my heart to. And, and and when I mean the kiss in the cheek, I'm talking about Judas, where they give you a kiss in the cheek and then, you know, at the end of the day, it was not what you expect it to be. You know, they give you their heart and next thing you know, they turn their back away from you. You know, or they just lead you on thinking that you are, that they love your company, they love your friendship and all. And at the end of the day, they don't really love you, you know, and you don't really know. They love what you do, but they don't love you fully. You know, so these are like some of the things that we can go through as disciples. And I've been through so many of that, a whole lot. I mean, sometimes, um, sometimes I could like wish that I could have one of those hearts that could be a little bit harder. You know, you know, some of us disciples, you know, yeah, I mean, like, okay, man, I want I need to pray for my heart. My heart is hard or et cetera. And, and you're in that safe mode because since your heart is somewhat hard, then you have the ability not to get hurt because you, you over guard it. But if you open your heart and you just let the steel, the steel bar, you know, you know, in jail, you get arrested, you be in the cell, and the, the bar is made of steel. Sometimes we put the steels in our hearts so that no one gets in because we don't want to get hurt. And and at the end of the day, um, sometimes, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I wish I could be like that. Sometimes because then maybe I could be protected and not get hurt. But unfortunately, I just don't know how to do that. And because I don't know how to do that, I could tend to get hurt a lot with friendships or with people that pull my heart to. And um, and then look at this scripture. And um, I'll say this is a closing scripture. This may not be a closing scripture. But just in case, let me just share the scripture. 1 John chapter 4, verses 18. It says here, There is no fear in love, but perfect love dries out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Now in closing, this is what it comes down to. As much as we want to guard our hearts because we could be afraid of getting hurt, but... We just cannot be afraid. We just cannot fear getting hurt. Getting hurt is is part of life. You know, um, Jesus got hurt with, by Judas with a kiss after giving his whole heart to him. And, you know, Jesus also got hurt by his disciples scattering. But the most important thing that really hurt Jesus the, the most is the separation between him and the Father and God at the cross. That hurt his heart the most. And um, the heart is deep waters, you know, and so much that goes into the heart, 
it's not easy it's challenging can't tell you countless times how many times I've been hurt you know even by people you know you just give 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 you know you want to do something nice and yeah people see that but then sometimes they think yeah you're still not good enough you know and and that's what those things that I experienced throughout my discipleship life remember two two guys that I was studying the Bible with you know I was giving them my heart I cook for them you know I, I invest and at the end of the day this they decided to just move, go on, you know. They they don't want to study the Bible or they don't want to just be unified with us anymore. So it's like, man, so it's like, you know, in the world, right? You know what's really sad in the world? You know, in the world, unfortunately, there's this thing called one night stand. It's sad, but, you know, that does happen in the world with men and women. You know, they, they do not want to be in this relationship. They don't even want to date. But they just want to have a one night stand, you know, and then when they have that one night stand, they feel encouraged for just that one night. And then after that is goodbye. And and that sucks. And, 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 and that's how I feel, too. Sometimes, man, you give your heart to these people, they will just, and, and especially people you're studying with, they can give you like that one night, that one day stand, so to speak, you know, or just like, yeah, I don't know if you can relate, but I've been through a whole lot of that. You just pour your heart. You know, you want to invest, but you don't want to have that, that one day stand with them spiritually, so to speak. You want to continue to have a continuous stand with them, you know. So guys, in, cl just in closing, once again, on that scripture about fear. Can't have any fear. You can't, keep, you can't be afraid to get hurt. You know, you won't get hurt, even amongst your people. But you got to keep forgiving. And just keep moving forward and maybe just maybe maybe just maybe God could just lift you up in due time God could just protect you in a way where you will not have to go to a continuous let down but God will God will protect you you know so but anyway guys I uh, hope this is an encouragement to you to like don't be afraid to love even those that don't want to love you back you know don't be afraid to give you know and guard your heart what would that look like i never understand that scripture because i don't know how to not give my whole heart but i mean i guess if if i had to put two and two together guard your heart meaning don't allow satan to steal your heart that's what it come down to, you know. So, anyway, guys, uh, love you a whole lot. And um, I hope this is an encouragement to you. Take care.